So congratulations, you unveiled the title yeah. of Avatar. It's only a big deal because we didn't have a title. We only didn't have a title because I couldn't make up my damn mind. Is that what it was? <laughs> yeah. It's that simple. So the title is? The title is Fire and Ash, okay. which has meaning when you see the film. It's yes. not in and of itself that earth shaking, but when you see the film, it makes sense. I actually think it says a lot. It says a lot because we know from the way of water, we know what that was about. So what kind of world are we exploring with fire and ash, maybe? Well, if you think about what is fire, fire can represent hatred, can represent violence, trauma, you know. Power. It, it, power, a possible misuse of power. Yeah. Right? There's a lot of thematic stuff. What does ash represent? In my mind, in this film, it represents the aftermath of all of that energy, which is grief and having to live with, you know, what you've done. And so, as I told, you know, the audience today, 14,000 of my closest friends, you know, this film goes much deeper on our characters and deep emotional consequences for them that threatens their relationships with each other, tests their bonds, and so on. And that's why I say, I think the movie is simultaneously unexpected based on what you think you've seen six hours into the Avatar saga so far between first film and second film. And it will also be what you crave. Because I think what, what you crave as an audience is not just more beautiful imagery. We have that, of course we have that. Right. You know, we have a, an amazing, detailed, rich world and the imaginations of a lot of great artists that go into it. But we, by this point, I believe we care about the journey of these people. You know? That's the magic of Avatar. We've talked about this, the tertiary level. Tertiary level, exactly. Yes. We go, we definitely, this is, this is something that we, we shared in, in an interview, which is, there's the obvious level, right? And then there's the secondary level, which is thematic, you know, sort of what's it about, right? But there's a tertiary level that you can't really describe. That's a feeling that you have when you watch it. And you could call it spiritual if you want, which is how do I, why do I feel so strangely connected to this world or to this, these images or to these people? And we work hard to make sure that the film, that so far we've done it twice and we hope yeah. to do it a third time, that the film connects with people in a way that they can't describe. Yeah. Where do we meet your characters at the start of this film? Where are they at? Well, I mean, remembering where they left off. Yeah. Um, which, it, it, you know, they're in, in such an unimaginable uh, place. So obviously, you know, picking it up from there is, is um, it's the next, it's the, nat the natural course of what the story should, should sort of say. And, um, and like Jim says, it's, it's, they're going to be challenged. Their bonds will be challenged. And, um, but the Sully stick together. Where do we meet your character at the beginning? Where is he? I think he's underwater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, yeah, I, you know, I don't know how much we're allowed to, to, to talk about. A lot about of training, it. a lot of preparation, you know, just for the physicality. See, the thing is that the image that you see is generated by a computer for a, a large amounts of the film, but it's all based on, on the performances. Everything that you see a person do, they did, you know? And if it was underwater, they were doing it underwater. Yeah. So, you know, there's a difficulty factor. It's not like just doing a voice part for an animated film. It's many levels, you know, beyond that. What kind of world uh, are you going to explore in this film? Obviously, you know, we saw Pandora in the first one. We went underwater in the second one. The title does suggest besides you know, what that represents, but what kind of worlds are audiences gonna see in this one? You'll see new cultures and they inhabit different parts of, of the, the planet Pandora. It's actually an exomoon, it's a moon around a much larger gas giant, but just think of it as a planet. <laughs> think of it, think of Earth. Think of deserts, mountains, ocean, islands, all the, you know, the Great Plains. Think of all the environments that are available. You know, George Lucas made a decision, his decision, was to have a different planet represent each of the, there's a desert planet and a jungle planet and a swamp planet and a city planet. It's cool. It's very cool, we all love it, right? I think we can agree on that. Yeah. But 
Earth isn't like that. We have it all right here. You know, you could explore Pandora for the rest of your life, you know, and see all these different amazing places and the way that nature adapts and the way that these human-like intelligent beings adapt to these different biomes. And that'll be a continuing thing if we go beyond to movie four and five. They're, they're all written. They're yeah. written like a series of novels. Yeah. They're just kind of kept in a vault right now. But we know where we're going with it. You know? yeah. So you'll, you'll meet two new cultures in this film. Not one, we've met right. one new culture in the last film. We'll meet two the new Macrina, cultures. Yes. Yeah, right? the, the reef people in the last, last film. And they took us into their world, and you'll meet two new ones, and you'll go into their world, right? So we just keep adding. We keep adding detail and complexity. But we stay at the core of this relationship, you know, between Jake and Neytiri and their children. And the children are, are quite central, you know. Yeah. As actors, what kind of a journey would you say, compared to the first two, do your characters go on in this film? Um, and then these new, you know, clans that you're meeting along the way, how will it test them? I think, look, what I've always loved about this journey, I've got friends that do other movies where the, the characters, the situation changes in, the, in the, their sequels, but the characters stay the same. Yeah. Jim really keeps pushing us mm. and he keeps making us go deeper and the stakes keep getting higher, so therefore the problem solving of these characters keep going more. And as an actor, that's a gift, because yeah. you don't want to just keep doing the same carbon copy character. Yeah. Jake does evolve, and Natiri does evolve, and their relationship evolves, and not just in a physical form with children, but in who they are inside, in their own, in their own spirit and soul. And you know, that's, that to me, as an actor, that's why I leap love coming back and working on it, mm -hmm. because you know you're gonna go and you're gonna have to push these characters right to the, right to as far as they're gonna go and then beyond that. And as an actor, that's what you're searching for. You're searching for someone that keeps pushing a character outside their comfort zone. Yeah. It's also an interesting mirror of our collective lives. I'm a little bit ahead of you in family building, right? When you guys signed up, you didn't have children. No. But then it went into a family story with children and what that means to the parents and the compromises that they have to make to who they thought they were and all of those things. So there was plenty of stuff for you guys to latch on to from your, from your actual lives. Absolutely. I, you know, there is, when you're young and you don't have children, there's a sense of fearlessness. You, 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 you jump at every opportunity. You, you climb that mountain without that rope, you know, for safety. And all of a sudden, you have to care for this innocent life. And you find yourself completely in love with something in a way that you've never experienced love before. It's like love at, at, at the fifth dimension. And, um, and the thought of, of, of you losing that life is just unimaginable. It's inexplicable. You just can't, you just can't go there. And, and, I, and Jake and Neytiri are no different. They're individuals that were fearless and that had a lot of anger in them, a lot of rebellion in them. They meet, their love makes them vulnerable, but they decide to sort of come together and their bond makes them stronger. Now with their family, it's the same thing. Now having a yeah. family, they're experiencing a certain level of vulnerability and they have to find strength in, in, in keeping them alive. Well, what happens when you lose one? Well, that's, that's their next step. And Jim, you know, just like Sam was saying, just keeps pushing, um, just keeps pushing us as people to experience these unimaginable feelings because Jake and Neytiri need to, need to go through them. Um, and I feel like if, if we're referring to that, that third level of depth of, of Avatar, um, you know, the journey, it's, it, it speaks to the human core of, of what is dear to you, what is important to you, your family, your beliefs, your environment, your, yourself, you know, um, and, and, um, and, and your sense of justice as well. Like, mm -hmm. what, what, that's very important to you. Well, those are the themes that, that Jake and Neytiri are exploring constantly. And, and as long as they choose each other, then, then they will experience it together. Somehow it's going to it's going to work because they each makes up what the other one lacks yeah. in a way. And, and uh, you know, Natiri has always had such a strong sense of 
who she is and where she is in the world. And everything challenges that. And Jake, on the other hand, has never known where he fits in. Yeah. He's trying to fit in here and then he's trying to fit in there. But he always knows who he is in it, you know. So they're really interesting characters. They're fun yeah. to write, you know. It's great to work with you guys over the over the years. We've been doing this for 17 years, <laughs> you know. And so far, we got three movies under our belt. Yeah. You know? And we got a few we more, got to go. Two more to go. Yes, I can't at wait. least. <laughs>